future solar power system using chemical looping combustion. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chung Chung Jiang. I'm from Institute of Engineering Thermal Physics, Chinese Academy of Sciences. And today, I will. Sorry. Uh, today, I'm so happy to be here, <laughs> to be here to share my research with you. And my topic today is the analysis of a mid-temperature solar power system using chemical looping combustion. And here. Um, I will introduce my research for four parts. The first one is background and then the mid-temperature solar-driven chemical looping power system and the experimental assessment of, of honeycomb CLC reactor and the last is the conclusions and the future work. So according to the IEA World Energy Outlook 2012, concentrating solar power grows 23% on average per year. So they grow up so quickly. And the challenge for that is the development of the efficient energy storage system. So according to the CSP roadmap 2014, solar fuels from thermal chemical process for energy storage is one of the most promising technology in the field of solar thermal utilization in the next 50 years. So how to use that? And uh, in recent decades, many researchers have to some concentrations to, to these uh, fields. So they, are fo uh, they focus on the high temperature solar thermal chemical applications like solar methane cracking and uh, solar coal gasification and also the methane reforming systems like that. So look at this, all of these uh, processes. Uh, they all uh, need, require the high temperature above 1000 degrees C. And then this temperature will need high concentration ratio above 500 like that. So maybe the high um, uh, investment or high cost of that system. And then for the gas storage, we need the, uh, for, for the gas, so we need the large volume containers. So the cost is a big problem. So how to get the higher um, efficiency, of, uh, efficiency for that? So uh, our idea is to combine the solar energy to some very smart process, chemical process here. So we think about the chemical open combustions. So look at this uh, schematic of this system. So uh, at first, for a week, there are two reactors you know, or two steps. The first one is the reduction uh, reactor. So at the left, uh, look at that. The fuel, like uh, maybe such as the methane, will input this reduction reactor. So they will react with the metal oxide, just at the oxygen carrier. So maybe uh, nickel oxide, uh, some oxides like that. So they will produce the uh, CO2 and water and they will absorb the solar heat uh, from the solar. So uh, this is the first step. And, and at the same time, the metal oxide will be reduced into the metal. So the metal will be transferred to the reoxidized reactor at the right hand. And then they will be reoxidized by the air uh, to the metal oxide. So it's like a circle. Uh, it's called the chemical uh, uh, chemical looping co combustion, and the, uh, for the right uh, for the right side uh, for the reoxidation uh, re step, they will re release the heat, maybe combined with some thermal uh, thermal cycles, and to make the power generation like that. So here is the equations for these two steps, and. Look at this one, we input the methane and we use the metal oxide and we use the solar heat 
and we can reduce the temperature from the high temperature above 1000 degrees C to the 500 degrees C here. Um, so the, I can use the low concentration ratio, maybe one, 100 like that. So we can use the tr uh, parabolic trough uh, concentrators here. So mid and low temperature solar is converted to the solar fuel chemistry energy. So in the nickel uh, here. So for the energy storage density, because for the energy storage, we always focus on the energy storage density. So for the nickel is about 570 kilowatt hour per cubic meter. So which is eight times the heat storage of the, of the um, mountain salt at the same conditions. So for, uh, for validating this uh, idea, so we just built, uh, set up our ex, ex, uh, experiments, the reactors. So for the left left side, uh, this, uh, uh, this is our reactor. Uh, is this uh, uh, not only the chemical looping combustor, uh, combustion reactor, it's like the honeycomb. So uh, for this, uh, for, uh, so let's think the left one is the gas input, like methane or air, yeah. And then in the middle, it's the reactor. So we just combine the uh, reduction reactor and the reoxidation reactor together here. And then, and then the, uh, the, the last one is the, uh, is the gas text here. So this is the experiment conditions here. So we use the uh, 300 to 500 degrees C for the reduction uh, reaction, and then we use the 1,200 degrees C for the reoxidation uh, uh, reaction. So, uh, so we use methane, and for the oxygen carrier, we use nickel oxide and nickel aluminate. So, uh, so the nickel aluminate is used for the support, like the inert. So, let's say the reactivity for for, for this reactor. So we care about the CO2, uh, uh, the methane conversion and the selectivity. Here we can see the CO2 uh, concentration here for the honeycomb CLC uh, reactor. It's really higher than the traditional fixed bed reactor here. So uh, that, uh, that's because a series of exile microchannels for providing, uh, can providing a sufficiently contact area and disturbance for the reactant gas. So they will enhance this reactivity of the nickel oxide. So, so we need this, the first stage here, we need the CO2 and the water uh, products. And this, this area is just like the side, side reaction. So we, we don't want this one. So we just, uh, uh, we just uh, maybe uh, shorten the time here for 1,000 uh, seconds. Uh, and this area is for the oxidation stage. So we just uh, say the, say, say the uh, maybe the extra uh, air here. And so the CO2 concentration of the honeycomb reactor has higher um, methane conversion ratio than traditional ones. I will show you here. Here, is the, here this one is the methane conversion for the conversion, uh, com, com, uh, traditional one and our reactor here. Our reactor uh, methane conversion is almost uh, 100%, so the reactivity is really, really high. So, um, so for the traditional one here, maybe, maybe uh, th this one, um, th this one, so it's um, at um, maybe 65 like that. Uh, uh, and 
we can see the higher improvement for, for the honeycomb CLC reactor here. So um, we also care about the nickel oxide convert because we need to release more oxygen to make this, uh, make the more heat release for per more uh, oxygen carriers like that. So we can see the conversion of uh, oxygen carrier uh, is increased from 52 to almost 100, it's 98 percent. So compared with the traditional one, the other, other reactor is more, uh, it has higher performance and higher selectivity to CO2. So because the, uh, I, I just told before, they have larger contact area and they have higher, uh, they can reduce the diffusion resistance and then increase the reactivity. So for the regener uh, regeneration, because we want to, they have a long-term run. So we make the continuous running time for 150 hours here and for 30, uh, 30 redux cycles. So here is the results it, it, in our uh, honeycomb reactor. So we can see we, we just uh, uh, from uh, mid the nickel oxide here is like the one for the nickel oxide and zero for uh, nickel, just nickel. So it's just uh, mm, uh, just uh, very stable. So we, we can say the regeneration performance is good for our reactors. So for the traditional one, we can see a the oxygen release may be about no more than 40% uh, here. So the just 40% nickel oxide to be, uh, was reduced into nickel. So they may need uh, more oxygen carriers here for that traditional reactors. So here is the SEM uh, gram, uh, graphs here. So before 30, uh, before the um, continuous running time, uh, we can see the uh, the structure is stable, and they uh, they show they are show not um, sorry show, showing not the evident change for that structure. So, uh, except for the experiments performance, experiment performance, we care about the system. So how is our reactor uh, um, performed in our system? Because we want to use the solar energy and to make some maybe power generation for this case. So here uh, in the left side, we can see uh, this is our system. We just use, use that to do some calculation to uh, simulation here. So uh, first, we observe the solar here and to use the uh, parabolic trough concentrator here and to use this uh, high temperature OU and to heat this reduction reactor here. And uh, here the nickel oxide will be reduced into nickel and then they just transferred and here we just uh, combined with our chemical looping combustion the reoxidation stage with the thermal uh, thermal uh, thermal cycles to make the electricity so we just want to know how it works and what what's the performance here so there are uh, here are the parameters uh, for the all of the these three parts. So let's right, let's talk about the performance. <coughs> Here uh, we want to know the efficiency. So efficiency here we want to talk about is the solar to electricity. So uh, here we can see the we we use the 
maybe we use the concentration ratio 82 and the way uh, got the net solar to electricity efficiency of the of this this one our uh, our uh, reactors uh, system uh, is about 32 percent and then for the we compared with uh, ours with the solar uh, solar driven uh, thermal cycles here is means the solar only yeah so the efficiency is just uh, 23 so we improved almost uh, eight percentage point compared with the, this one so for the for the potential use in the system it's have good performance uh, uh, potentials yeah so in conclusion, we for for this re this research, we just in, employed in rain, uh, mid temperature solar power system by using chemical looping combustion, and then we developing a new honeycomb CLC reactor and validating the process of methane and oxygen carrier at 500 degrees C for the solar energy storage, and then we in integrating the combined circle with the LC, uh, L, CLC and analyzing the thermal dynamic performance and we get the thir um, get a good, good performance then at last we providing a, high, a new solar story, a storage system to capture the uh, low uh, mid temperature concentrating solar heat and to uh, use that um, the next work here is, um, is employing xenon lamp to study the real solar driven chemical looping process and to see the performance and uh, to manufacturing the direct and the indirect solar chemical looping reactor. And then we will discussing, uh, discuss the reactivity and the regenerability of the different solar uh, irradiation. So thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you. Are there any questions? We have time for questions. So I have a question. Um, yeah. What are the general principles to select the oxygen carrier? You mean the, so how, how do you select that? Yeah, you pick nickel, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's the uh, commercial one, so we just p uh, pick that because the uh, it's very mature and uh, mm, so and the high efficiency and the, uh, for the high performance in the methane con convergence. So we just choose the nickel. But I've, but we have uh, we have compared with the iron and the uh, cobalt oxide like that. So here, we just shoot the commercial one. Right, I mean, yeah. yeah. So compared to the other options, yeah. why nickel is, is more widely used no. than what lies? Yeah, why here we want to uh, say it, uh, uh, we all use the nickel oxide, but we use the different shapes for the reactor because we use the honeycomb CLC. So they just use the, maybe the, um, the traditional one, not the honeycomb. So the, the, the shape, we have the tubes here. So that's why we think. Can you understand? Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you.